Hello, yes, that's right, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. Today, I'm joined by South African catamaran sailing rock star, William Edwards, who's gonna give me, give us, sorry, who's gonna give us some of his insights on how to sail a Hobie 16 fast. Cool, thank you so much, Joe, and thanks to Joyrider for this opportunity. And yeah, welcome to everyone. I hope we can impart some knowledge onto you. Um, so yeah, as Joe says, we, uh, I'm from South Africa. Um, I've been sailing yachts since uh, about 75, uh, mostly um, catamarans and especially the Hobie 16. We've done multiple world championships on 16s and Formula 18, Tigers, things like that. So we're gonna start off basically with the, with the 16 and we're gonna say, okay, the Hobie 16 is a relatively simple boat, okay? It doesn't have a lot of adjustments and things like that. But the fact is, it's not a simple boat, okay? Anyone can sail a Hobie 16 up and down, it's fantastic. But to actually get it to really sail fast and to get that little bit of an edge over your competitors, that's where the subtleties come in on the rigging um, and especially the adjustments. If you look at any other high performance boat and you look at how many adjustments there are on that boat, it tells you that they're important and they are important. And we've got some adjustments on the 16 and they're exceptionally important, okay? So we're gonna start off basically Probably the easiest, we're going to start off from the front of the boat, okay? <clears throat> the jib position here, okay, is all relative to how much sheeting tension you can get on the jib, okay? So the sheeting tension basically means is how much pressure you can pull back on the sail, okay, without closing the slot, which is the gap between the mainsail and the jib, okay? So you want the exhaust of the jib. The wind comes in, okay? The wind will come in into the sail and it'll bend around and it gets exhausted out of there, all right? So, just make that easier probably. You want the exhaust to move freely, all right? Past the mainsail, okay? Not always happens, doesn't always happen, but that is the objective. So you've got some settings over here, okay? So your first setting, if it's really windy, you can take it right to the front, all right? And you can crack your traveler an inch or two, all right? That's gonna open the exhaust and it's gonna give you, um, it'll gonna stop the backwinding, which often counter rotates the mast. Have you ever had that situation where the mast counter rotates on you, okay? We'll get to that situation. So that's, that's the, the crux of the jib. Go as far down as you can and keep, your, keep your, um, your tension here. So breeze, okay, you start in the front there when it's really windy and you move back. But you know, a lot of the sails are different. They might have stretched, Different makes, Neil Pride makes sales, um, North makes sales, but Hobie Worldwide now we're getting supposedly one sale, but the sales are very different, okay? They have been. You can lay them down on top of each other. You can take an old generation sale, put it on the new generation sale. There's a big difference. I don't know if you've done that, Joe. Yeah, we have had a look. Yeah. So, um, but it's your boat, so you're gonna set it up like that, okay? So that's important. So your jib set up, your baton tension, just a nice little bit of camber, okay? It doesn't need to be any more than that, all right? Then we move to the mast rotation, okay? And everyone wonders, okay, well, you know, that's great, why? Why can't we just have a stiff mast like that? Don't have to worry about the damn thing counter-rotating and all the rest of it. It's all got to do with profile and flex, okay? So, firstly, this mast rotation and things like that was, you know, you remember this was designed I think in the in this in the 60s, eh? This boat, and it's an incredibly well-designed boat, but not through science or anything like that. It was basically through um, Hobie Alter and his mate um, Wayne Schaefer. You know, they started drawing things in the sand because they couldn't go surfing with the onshore breeze. So this innovation is was way ahead of its time. Okay, so you look at the profile of the mast. That's the entry. Okay, it's already um, got a a, um, a nice Clean, clean entry, so you're getting no deflection or anything on your sail as, as you're sailing. However, there's other subtleties that you've got to remember. The more that this mast turns, the more that the profile turns, and the profile then flexes, can flex easy. If you do that, and you try and pull the mast back, it's, nothing's going to happen because it's, that's where the strength lies, in that dimension. But as soon as you turn it, you can hold a mast and you can turn that mast and you hold it flat. So when I say flat, with that, it'll flex. You'll see the flex. If you hold it this way, there's no flex. Okay, so what the flex is gonna do to your sail, 
is it's going to loosen off that leech. All right. So the more it flexes, the more the loose, the looser the leech can blow off. Okay. Great for upwind sailing in a big breeze. Not good for sailing in medium conditions. Okay. Because you need that leech to drive the boat to weather. All right. Very important. So keeping a tight leech gives you height. Okay. But not too tight because then the sail can hook. Does everyone understand how it can hook? It means that the, the wind coming into the mast is going through the sail, all right? But the leech is slightly to weather, is slightly to weather of the mast. So it means that the wind is coming in and it's, it's, it's being pushed out to weather, all right? So it's not that great. It can hook slightly at the bottom. And you can look at it on the beach and you can sheet it in, you can say that's, that's hooking. All right, you go on the water and you look at sail behind a guy and the leech is wide open. So you must remember that's going to get pressure. Okay, and once that pressure's on, the mast does flex anyway and it will exhaust in the correct manner that you want it to exhaust. Okay, so we say, okay, what can we do to this mast rotation to make me faster? Okay, I weigh 140 kgs with my wife, which I've sailed with for how long? 30 years. <laughs> She's, we're both still married as well. But, um, you know, I wouldn't sail with anyone else. Lucinda is incredible. So we 140. So we don't need too much mast rotation. If you're sailing like 130-ish, all right, you can consider nipping off a bit of rotation, okay, because it's going to make the boat more manageable and it's going to make it quicker upwind in the breeze. Now, we always think of breeze because we used to sail 16 worlds in trade wind conditions. We sail in Cape Town, it's the Cape of Storms. We sail in a lot of wind, okay? So we always nip off a little bit on the mast rotation, okay? Australians probably do the same, all right? You can even, I don't know if this is class legal, but you can make yourself a set of caps that you can interchange. So in the big breeze, okay, you put down, you put your cap on, that's gonna give you more rotation. In the moderates, you put your cap down, that's gonna give you less. I think you can do it, providing you don't do it on the water. Okay, so I stand under correction on that, but um, again, a very subtle change, but it's, it's significant. Okay, you'll see a boat that's worn a, a lot of the time. You'll see that the mast rotation is worn away and that boat flies in the breeze. It really goes fast, okay, because what's happening is your mast is softer, your leech is opening up, the gust hits you, it accelerates the boat, it doesn't blow it over the whole time, okay. So that's really quick, okay. Uh, if you look at the dows, they were designed 2,000 years ago. You look at the rig and you look at the top of that dow, you can see when the gust hits it, it just blows away like that. You'd think it would capsize with the amount of sail that it's got up there, but it doesn't. The whole rig just blows away. So same thing, but just much more ex exaggerated. Okay, we're going to move back now to Downall or Cunningham or whatever you want to call it. Significant, very significant um, um, machine this because you can make so many adjustments on it okay so we go rule of thumb so what does what does the downhaul do okay it pulls the the luff of the sail and pulls it down and um, it it under tension the mast then gives you p-bend which is pre-bend okay so it pulls the mast down because obviously the mast that tension has to go somewhere so it pulls it down it bends it like that so if you want to we can pull it on um, we were going to careen the boat and it'll give us a good idea when we pull it on. Jad, you, you want to do that quickly? We can just careen the boat and we'll flip it over, huh? capsize it. And then we can just have a look at what the, the mast does. You can walk around. You know, all these settings are actually, um, whether you're sailing a Formula 18, whether you're sailing any boat, they all, it, the, 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 the actual basis remains exactly the same. They just have different um, subtleties. Um, you know, on a Formula 18, you must remember you're playing that Cunningham. That's, part, that's what you're doing. So it tells you how significant the Cunningham is on a 16. But you can't play it. But you can certainly set it and change it while you're racing. So let's go back to that and just finish off. So we've done the mast rotation. We've done the Cunningham. Okay, that's all to do with your mast and your sail. Okay. So you look at the profile now. We'll just switch that profile and you look at the sail change. See that? 
You see the pocket's much deeper now? You see that pocket go? Okay, now if you want to come and stand behind me, you can see exactly what the mast does. So let go there, Doug. Okay, you can see there, you see how straight it is? Watch when I turn it now. Yeah. Okay, so that's all to do with rotation. Very, very important part of, of making a Hobie 16 go fast. Lighter people, more rotation, okay? So now what we're going to do is you're going to stand here, you're going to watch the mast when I pull the down all on. Okay, see what happens? Okay, now look at the sail. Look at the sail. You see the pocket which is running down the middle of the boat, probably 45 degrees. Watch that pocket. You see? Pocket moves slightly further forward. Okay? Now you watch the leech there. You see the leech? Alright? Watch how it drops down. You see that? So what you're doing, so now we're gonna set up to we'll max it out now. Okay, it's not maxed out, but it's pretty close. And then we look at our sheeting tension. Okay? So we've got a pretty flat sail now. All right, so if I was sailing in big breeze, I'd be sheeted on going upwind, maxed out on the downwind, downhaul. And on my, um, my main sheets, the outwall. The outwall sadly doesn't do too much, okay? It does the obvious, which flattens the base of your sail. That's all it does, really. Okay, so it's not too much to be concerned about. On other boats, makes a big difference. Formula 18, you can actually pull the back of your, your leech off if you, don't, um, if you don't rig it up correctly. So it makes a, a lot, lot more difference. So now we, we look at it and we say, okay, we've got our leech tension set up, okay? Now you can see here these reference points. You've got to start somewhere, always have a reference point because that's how you're gonna to get to know your boat, okay? The other thing is, if you're in a club and someone is really quick, either it's upwind in a breeze or upwind in moderate conditions, go and steal with your eyes, okay? Go and look at his boat, go and look at his setup, and then you start your referencing points. Take notes. Put your referencing points on here, and when you're really going fast in the breeze, reference off that. Then you've got a point of departure where you're going really quick and you're understanding your boat. You put it there and you make your little notes, okay? Because as I said earlier, the 16 doesn't have many um, um, adjustments, but the adjustments that you make are critical and it's overlooked completely because you, you can understand is why is this guy, and it's always like that, you know, when you look over your shoulder, the guy's going higher. When you look to your lee, he's coming up, you know. A lot of the time it's psychological, you know, you've got, it's, it's one of the best one design boats that you can get, in fact, you know. But um, by, by being able to understand the boat, and being understand, understand the settings, you're already another 10, 15 percent ahead of your next rival. So hopefully once we've done this, we can, and I'm happy to take uh, um, questions afterwards, you can start building your own knowledge in terms of boat speed, whether it's Formula 18, whether it's, um, it's, it's 16s, whether it's 14s, whether it's um, laser, whatever the case may be. All the principles remain the same to a large extent, but they have their subtleties and their nuances and things like that, okay? Rig tension, all right? That's we're gonna move on to now. Okay, what the rig tension does, you can see um, when we loosen it off, we lose sheeting tension, the rig moves backwards, okay? So what happens actually when there's a lot of breeze, you can see that the leech will, I'll just come here and we can do it. So we've got Max Start Cunningham, we're 139 kgs, we're on the weight limit. Okay, so what we're wanting is when the gusts hit, we want that. All right, and by doing that, you need to have a little bit more rotation on your mast. You need to have a lot of Cunningham, okay? So you just, you want that. You want this to open, okay? Because if it stays stiff, all right, then the hull flies, okay, when the gust hits, okay? And that boat feels out of control. It feels unpleasant to sail. The hull's flying up the whole time. You're not going fast, but the guy to leeward is going damn fast, you know? And you say, how does he do that? He's probably, his leech is opening up and he's quicker because of that. 
all right? So just remember that the subtleties is your mast bend, your mast rotation, your downhaul, okay? The big adjustments is your um, jib tension, okay? The jib tension creates a lot of um, um, changes in the sense that it drops the rig back, it drops the rig to leeward, which is also very important. So the entry into the sail has changed, okay? You'll find that the boat is a lot more manageable. Your trapezes drop as well, okay? So that also, if there's a big sea or a big chop, just take your trapeze, it's got, um, it's got two settings here. Well, it doesn't actually, but we call it two. So if you drop your rig back and there's a big chop and you get washed off the back, just clip yourself in there, okay? You move up quite a bit. All right, it's not fantastic, but it works. It stops you uh, washing off the boat, okay? Um, so now let's just get back and we'll just finish um, rig tension here. Okay, so we all know what happens with this. Okay, you watch what happens. Okay, that's what happens with rig tension. It's massive. Okay, it's probably your biggest adjustment that you can do. Okay, everything drops back. Sail opens up, leech opens up. So what I do, okay, is the breeze is on, moderate conditions, we start double wiring. We start getting overpowered. On the next tack, we crack in on the, the downhill, right? Boat's beautiful, okay? We carry on sailing on the downwind. Lucinda actually lets it up to get more belly into the sail for the downwind. She pulls it on as we go around to the mark on the same setting. So we always look at that setting. We say, okay, let's pull to three or pull to four, or whatever the case may be. We look at the conditions, we say, wow, it's come up another three or four knots. We pull the downhaul a bit more, okay? And we go on the upwind on the downhaul, till we max out, okay? Once we've maxed out, then we start dropping the rig back. We don't drop the rig back and then, so you start maxing out on this before you drop the rig back, all right? So then you start exactly the same process, okay? You, you, you can do it on the tack, you crack off just a bit on the first tack if you're getting a tool. So you can set the boat on the tacks. Don't try and do it while you're sailing. You can set this on the downwind, no problem, okay? Sometimes doing it on the tack is a bit dicey, okay? It depends how big that, rather just sail the boat to the weather mark, get round, set it up for the next upwind, all right? Okay. So now, um, trapezes, we'll do that. Um, any questions in terms of, of where we are now? All right, yeah, thanks. Hmm. It's quite a lot of uh, information to absorb, but it's, um, it's all relevant. How much do we drop this, uh, jib? The jib halyard. We drop the jib halyard until the boat's comfortable, okay? Until it feels good. If you go too much, you're obviously going to end up yeah. with a lot of other problems, okay? One thing I didn't um, say is that when you downhaul, you're going to actually get to a situation where the mast wants to cut and rotate, okay? And that's not good, all right? It's funny enough, it's quite fast, but you just don't have height, okay? You can also bend your mast by doing that, all right? So one of the things to counteract that mast rotation is to just crack the jib a bit, because the reason why it's rotating is the exhaust on the jib is pushing on the luff here, and it's rotating the mast, okay? So the hanger, you can see the hanger is set back like this. So that's to stop. If you had the hanger directly up here, you'd get a lot more mast rotation. The modern boats, they brought the hanger right back, okay? The, the hanger also gives you more sheeting tension, okay? So we would sail with much smaller blocks than this, all right? And we'd obviously take it straight back um, onto, the, onto the hanger so that it gives us um, more sheeting tension. So we want to drop back as much as we can, keep the sheeting tension on, Bring the center of effort back, bring the drive back, and uh, also the boat will ride through the chop much better if she's bow, if her bow's out, okay? She doesn't, she doesn't um, stick the bow in the whole time. She actually sails over the chop. Um, so that's also important in terms of being able to rake the mast back and retain your sheeting tension, okay? All right, we can flip her up, Doug. Um, William, yes. is there actually a physical amount like a measurement of jib halyard that would be your range? Like, would it be 10 centimeters more? 
Okay, so again, your reference points are very important on your jib. So you put it on the front of the mast there, you put your tape and you have your reference point on there. And then you can, you can then from that, you can actually create your same range. But I would say, let me just pull it in and I can, I can give you an idea of your range. Okay, so that's, that's moderate to light sailing. We want quite nice tight, but don't try and sheet block to block in the moderates, okay? You want to keep that camber in your sail, you want to stop it hooking. So don't sheet block to block. As the breeze picks up, you can start sheeting on. As you're starting getting overpowered, you clip off. So there's my mark, okay? So I would go 200, 250. Probably no more than 300, eh? So I would say that's the range, is no more than 300. But you know, you can, you can experiment yourself with that. Eh? One, two and three. Okay, that's, if the boat's a factory built boat, we normally go one, two and three, okay? One is if you're light and it's breezy, you can go to one, all right? I stick to two most of the time. I don't actually change it up and down. I use the, um, the rig, also I don't, I don't, I'm lazy to change the thing, so that's probably the biggest reason. But anyway, I'm being serious, is that I actually don't change it um, because you've got so much adjustment in your, in your jib halyard. It'll make, uh, it'll make it easier if you just go to two and you just stick on two, all right? But don't forget the guy at the crimping shop might have not crimped it 100%. It might be stretched. There's, uh, there's a little turnbuckle in here as well that could not, the, if it's turned out five mil, it's gonna make a difference. You know what I'm saying? So one, two, and three is where you wanna be. You wanna have good uh, rig tension for light breeze. Sheeting tension, you don't wanna oversheet, eh? So you sheet on until the, the sail looks good, okay? The sail must be stiff. You, you, if you want to look at the hooking now, it will be hooking if I sheet it on, okay? If you go to the back of the sail, you look down the back of the sail. It's not really hooking, but um, you know, it, it's not too much of a concern because you, can, you must adjust your main the, the whole time, you know? Until you hit that sweet spot. And then remember where the sweet spot is, okay? So, um, that's oversheeted for moderate conditions. You want to sheet it on and you just basically would sail it and you would sail like that. Keep sailing. You can feel the boat. When you're sailing the boat, okay, we'll go on to the rudders, all right. Five mil toe out. Four and a half. Four, between four and five mil, okay. Very difficult because you've got play in your rudders. Take all the play out of your rudders, all right. Work on your rudders. That is 10% of your boat speed. Get your shims sorted out, all right? Make sure that they, because sometimes they come out and they've drilled it a couple of mils off. It is terrible to sail that boat on the one tack, okay? Make sure that they're 100%. You can line them up on the, on the transom here. If they're nicely lined up on the transom, you're good. Okay? These have been the best invention that Hobie has ever made is the EP3s, you know, they stiff, they're strong, they don't break, and they hardly stall out, okay? We actually even sail with the rudder up on the, on the upwinds in the breeze. It's tricky, but it's really fast because, you know, you, you're already this, uh, you know, when you, you're tapping the top of the, uh, the water, there's only that much of the blade in the water, okay? Anyway, all right, it does help you steer, all right, but it's additional drag and any, and you must remember you, you're sailing and you've already got a bit of tension on your, your helm to keep the boat sailing instead of it coming up into wind. So this is, this is probably tracked off a little bit, which means that that one will track off a little bit, okay? Well, hopefully it shouldn't track off, it should actually run true because of that formal toe in that you've put in or toe out that you've put in. So it'll run through. So this one is cracked off. This one supposedly runs true, all right? But if you've got a long beat and you've got steady conditions, we crack the rudder up. We get on the wire, we get right back, and both set up correctly, we smoke, okay? But it comes with time, you know, you've just got to, you've just got to practice that. It really, it's a very satisfying feeling going upwind with a, with a blade up. But when you lose it, it's terrible because you go into a crash tack, you blow over backwards, you land on the rudder. 
<laughs> it's not great. All right, so <clears throat> just a quick couple of tips when you're sailing, okay? I would take this trapeze and I'd put it through there and I'd take the elastic and I'd put it through over here, okay? The reason being is you're sitting over here and these wash back generally and you're trying to get out on trapeze, you get all tangled up. So take this, this one to there, all right? The reason for that is, is in the light breeze you can push this through and you generally sometimes are up at the front here keeping the boat and then you want to tack and you do that and you get the things tangled up and it's an irritation. So rather be able to push them up. That one there and definitely one through there because when you, you want to be able to grab the trapeze here and just go straight in, all right? You don't want it to come when you, when you, once you tack because the wash of the waves and everything will push it back to there. So when you're tacking, it's behind you. You can't find it, okay? So just take it through some of the tramp lacing. You can even put it through these two holes, okay? I don't do that because I like to be able to push both my trapezes forward like that so that you don't have the issue with the till extension. Okay, that's just a little trick there. In terms of weight and weight positioning, light breeze up here, breezy you go back, okay? But again, you want to go upwind, you want the bow to be a little bit out a bit, you want to be, my foot will be exactly where that red um, thing is. You walk, you walk forward on the, on the, uh, the lulls, just to keep the, uh, the, the boat trimmed, okay? You don't want the transom sucking too much in light breeze or immediate breeze. You want them out the water, okay? Do you all know about the asymmetric hull, which uh, was another sort of unbelievable uh, insight by Hobie Alter, okay? Um, you've got a very flat section, so this is your dagger board. Eh? So, um, you know, you, you, if you've got too much weather helm, okay, you could think, okay, maybe it's because I'm too far back or too far forward, all right? It does make a difference, it's not a massive difference. But certainly, weight trim, phenomenal, okay? The settings that you've got are all exceptionally important. But the, the, one of the biggest things is that the psychologi your psychological uh, mentality in terms of making the boat go fast is probably the most important thing, is that if you've got your settings right and you believe you're fast, it's like the guy that plays tennis, right? You know, in his Im imagination, how many aces is he going to serve in his imagination? Every single one's going to be an ace, right? Same with sailing, huh? It's up here. It really, really is. Don't worry about the guy if it looks like he's going faster. Just look at your boat and all of a sudden you'll actually start going faster if you believe that you're fast. And I wish you guys a lot of sailing. It's a fantastic sport and it was a pleasure to be here and impart some of your knowledge. You're welcome to come and chat to me afterwards. But uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. There we are. <laughs> so thanks very much to William for that. And we wish him and Lucinda the best of luck at the Hobie Worlds in Spain. I'm sure that they're going to smash it. Well, let's see. They pre if it's if the proof is in the pudding, right? And the eating. <laughs>